Hello, this video will cover Chapter 2, Configuring a Network Operating System. Home networks typically interconnect a wide variety of end devices, usually connected to a home router. Home routers are actually four devices in one, router, switches, wireless access point, and firewall appliance. Routers forward data and also receive data from the internet. Switches connect end devices with cables. Wireless access points are radio transmitters capable of connecting end devices wirelessly, and the firewall appliance secures outgoing and incoming traffic. Each device is very different in hardware, use and capability, but in all cases it is the operating system that enables the hardware to function. The Cisco Internetwork Operating System, known as Cisco IOS, is a generic term for the collection of network operating systems used on Cisco networking devices. There are many distinct variations of Cisco IOS for switches, routers, and for other devices. Cisco IOS routers and switches perform functions that network professionals depend upon to make their networks operate as expected. Major functions performed or enabled by Cisco routers and switches include providing network security, IP addressing of virtual and physical interfaces, enabling interface-specific configuration to optimize connectivity of the respective media, routing, enabling quality of service technologies, and supporting network management technologies. When a computer is powered on, it loads the OS, normally from a disk drive, into RAM. The iOS file itself is several megabytes in size and is stored in a semi-permanent memory area called flash. Flash memory provides non-volatile storage. This means that the contents of the memory are not lost when the device loses power. Although the contents of flash are not lost during a loss of power, they can be changed or overridden if needed. This allows the iOS to be upgraded to a newer version or to have new features added without replacing hardware. Additionally, flash can be used to store multiple versions of iOS software at the same time. The portion of the OS code that interacts directly with the computer hardware is known as the kernel. The portion that interfaces with the applications and user is known as the shell. The user can interact with the shell using either the command line interface, or CLI, or graphical user interface, GUI. A Cisco networking device runs a particular version of the Cisco IOS. The version of iOS is dependent on the type of device being used and the required features. While all devices come with a default iOS and feature set, it is possible to upgrade them. There are several ways to access the CLI environment. The most common methods are console, telnet or SSH, and the AUX port. The console port is a management port that provides access to the Cisco device via a dedicated channel that is used for the device maintenance purposes only. This is known as out-of-band access. The advantage of using a console port is that the device is accessible even if no networking services have been configured, such as when performing an initial configuration of the networking device. When performing an initial configuration, a computer running terminal emulation software is connected to the console port of the device using a special cable. The console port can also be used when the networking services have failed and remote accesses of the Cisco IOS device is not possible. Telnet is a method for remotely establishing a CLI session of a device through a virtual interface over a network. Unlike the console connection, Telnet sessions require active networking services on the device. The network device must have at least one active interface configured with an internet address. SSH, or the Secure Shell, protocol provides a remote logging similar to Telnet, except that it uses more secure network services. As a best practice, use SSH instead of Telnet whenever possible. Another way to establish a CLI session remotely is via telephone connection, using a modem connected to the auxiliary port of a router. Similar to the console connection, this method is also an out-of-band connection and does not require any networking services to be configured or available on the device. There are a number of excellent terminal emulation programs 
available for connection to a networking device, either by a serial connection over a console port or by a Telnet SSH connection. The Cisco iOS modes are quite similar for switches and routers. The CLI uses a hierarchical structure for the modes. In hierarchical order, from most basic to most specialized, the major modes are user executive or user exec mode, privileged executive or privileged exec mode, global configuration mode, and finally other specific configuration modes such as interface configuration mode. Each mode has a distinctive prompt and is used to accomplish particular tasks with a specific set of commands that are available only to that mode. The hierarchical structure can be configured to provide security. Different authentication methods can be required for each hierarchical mode. This controls the level of access that network personnel can be granted. The two primary modes of operation are user exec mode and privileged exec mode. The user exec mode is at the most basic level of the modal hierarchical structure. It is the first mode encountered upon entrance into the CLI of an iOS device and allows only a limited number of basic monitoring commands. This is often referenced to as view-only mode because it does not allow the execution of any commands that might change the configuration of the device. It is identified by the CLI prompt that ends with the more than symbol. The execution of configuration and management commands requires that the network administrator use the privileged exec mode or a more specific mode in the hierarchy. The privileged exec mode can be identified by the prompt ending with the hash symbol. The syntax for entering the enable command is switch greater than enable with this. You enter privileged exec mode and you get the prompt switch hash to go back. Write disable and you get the prompt switch greater than. As you can see, the difference between the router and switch configuration is only visible in the prompt. The commands are the same. The primary configuration mode is called global configuration or global config. From global configuration mode, CLI configuration changes are made that affect the operation of the device as a whole. This mode is accessed by the command configure terminal. To move from any sub mode to the privileged exec mode, enter the end command or enter the key combination control plus C. There are many other keyboard shortcuts we are not going to discuss in this video. Now we are going to talk about accessing a switch. It needs an IP address and the subnet mask. This is configured on the switch virtual interface or SVI. The IP address along with the subnet mask identifies the end devices on the internet network. The subnet mask determines in which part of the larger network we are working on with an IP address. To prepare the communication with the switch, it is necessary to write several commands. Interface VLAN 1 is used to navigate to the interface configuration mode from the global configuration mode. IP address configures the IP address and the subnet mask for the switch. It is also important to consider the command nose shutdown because it enables the interfaces to be on an active state. In order for an end device to communicate over the network, its IP address and subnet mask must be configured. It is also possible to configure DNS. The DNS is the default gateway and translate the IP address to a web address. IP address information can be entered either manually into the PC or by using the dynamic host configuration protocol. The DHCP enables automatic IP addressing for every device in a network. You can plug in with an Ethernet cable. To configure the DHCP, select Obtain an IP address automatically and Obtain DNS servers address automatically. With this, the PC will be assigned an address associated with an IP. Another way to configure the DHCP is by the command ipconfig. This will show the IP information set up on the DHCP server at the subnet mask. You can also experience some conflicts with the IP addresses. Like for example, if you try to manually define a static IP address to a network device during a network failure. 
To solve this inconvenience, it is necessary to connect the network devices with a static IP address to a DHCP client or manually configure the IP on an end device that only uses IP addresses. To test the loopback address on an end device, it is recommended to use the ping command. With this, you can verify the internal IP configuration on a local host. It shows you that the drivers and the network interface function correctly. Last to mention is how you can check the intermediary devices. With the command show IP interface brief, check the conditions of the switch. Thank you for your attention.